Dr. Dorman most recently was Vice President of Institutional Advancement at Otterbein College and also served previously uh, at the University of Louisville from 1990 to 1994 and was also an executive with the Penn State Alumni Association. So Dr. Dorman, you've been here since July coming from Otterbein. How have you been welcomed since you first stepped foot on this campus? Well, everybody's been fantastic. It's been a great welcoming experience, and uh, we're delighted to be back in Pennsylvania. Otterbein is also a small school, 3,100 students approximately there versus the 16 to 1,700 here at Westminster. How does it compare or contrast to Westminster? Well, Otterbein was located in a suburban metropolitan area, so um, it had... Uh, it was a bigger institution. It also had a lot more of its students coming from the general metropolitan area than, say, Westminster has. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the big differences. Um, you said that, that they're coming from a different area. Uh, do, do you see any striking differences uh, between Westminster and between Otterbein uh, in terms of geographically, uh, with Otterbein being in a more suburban area and Westminster being in a more rural area? Or do you see a lot of similarities coming from there? Well, programmatically, there's some differences. I think uh, Westminster has a is embraces the liberal arts more so than Otterbein College did, which was more of a pre-professional uh, mm -hmm. uh, institution. Uh, Otterbein had a nursing program, for instance. It had a very active uh, equine science program, um, a large business program. Mm -hmm. um, also, it had three master's programs in uh, nursing, uh, an MBA, and also a master's of, of uh, uh, education. So it was, in some ways, a very different uh, institution. Um, um, there's a much larger freshman class here at Westminster, 450 to right. 460. It's a big change for every for all the upperclassmen here, for the faculty, the staff, administration. Um, there's been improvements made to the dorms and other facilities. We're getting more uh, and better high rankings and marks from U.S. News and World Report. Um, what are you most impressed with with this campus, with all of that factoring into um, the, the, the whole thing? Well, uh, the campus has grown tremendously under, under uh, Tom Williamson's leadership in the past and, and Oscar Remick before him. Um, but the thing that I, I continue to be most impressed with, I think, is the people. Uh, this is what makes Westminster what it is. It's the people. Uh, they are very focused on making sure that the students get an excellent a collegiate education and that's really what I'm most impressed with. With the large freshman class and with the growth here at Westminster that that people really did say that this college needed, uh, President Williams Williamson's mantra was get better not bigger. Uh, as the enrollment increases at Westminster how do you feel personal attention and the small school atmosphere that, that you I'm sure had at Otterbein and that you'll receive here, um, how do you think that should be maintained? Mm -hmm. Well Westminster will always be a small school uh, the question is, how small um, is small? And uh, we're going to be looking at that as we move into this coming year, as we look at um, planning for the next 10 years through a strategic planning process that we're going to be doing. And that will answer that question. Uh, both schools, Otterbein and Westminster, were commi are definitely committed to excellence. Like you said, Otterbein is a pre professional school. Westminster committed to the liberal arts. Uh, lots of rankings from U.S. News, like I said before. To what do you attribute those distinctions for each school, respectively? Well, I think, I, again, I think it's the, uh, the nature of the educational experience that the students at Westminster get. Um, because the faculty are so focused on making sure that there are good, successful outcomes of the students, we provide them an, an outstanding education and get them out in four years. And I think we've distinguished ourselves in that regard. Every school needs room for improvement. There's, there's always room for it. Where do you think Westminster needs the most improvements? Well, we have to continue to look at, look at our infrastructure. Um, uh, a lot of good things were done in the past 10 years in building on infrastructure, but we still have some things to do. Um, we need to improve our endowment, too. It's still relatively small, given where it needs to be, in order to uh, help the institution. So we'll be working hard on that as well. And finally, the last question, the big question, why, why Westminster? What drew you to this place? Well, I've known about Westminster for many years. When I was doing my doctoral work at Penn State, I shared a, uh, an office with a graduate of Westminster who used to talk a lot about the institution. And uh, I got to know the institution through him. And uh, when the position opened up, I had been nominated by uh, a president at, in uh, Philadelphia. 
And I knew Gloria Sahigas, uh, who is the Vice President for Institutional Advancement here. I'd known her for 11 years and called her up and said, you know, is, would this be something I should uh, pursue? And she thought it would be a good fit for me. And uh, I'm glad the board felt that way. Well, Dr. Dorman, we're unfortunately out of time. Thank you so much for taking time out again. <laughs>